that the Imagine series with you last game and wow, I, I, <laughs> I was popping off. Those those plays yeah. were crazy. What an intense battle between those two strong teams showing up today. And uh, of course, we're going to have two more amazing matches, hopefully. And Alpha still being here in a sense, not casting with us, but playing with us. So <laughs> I'm excited for that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with that being said, let's actually go into our picks and bans of our first game here. And uh, let's break it down a little bit for um, everyone. So first rotation, or first ban rotation rather, for uh, Orns, uh, the Orn squad, I'm going to call them now. Um, Argot, Lux, Scion. So it looks like a lot of top focus um, against Alpha Y, actually, <laughs> ironically. He is a very talented yeah. top laner and uh, is really one of the... Uh, uh, big stable points for his team. I've played against them in the past, so I know a lot of their uh, team dynamics and uh, how they kind of work together and mesh together. So really excited to see how they do here. But on the side of the Storm Riders, it looks like they're going to be focusing more on uh, the support, the support this game. And uh, let me um, just want to actually quickly check uh, supports. Um, I haven't seen them actually before so must be uh, someone to really be uh, worth note and really kind of focusing on um with that being said first pick they they didn't like getting banned out so much so they immediately pick up the lulu first round so i i really like this pick lulu is really safe and we've seen it in time and time again in support role here as it's just a great enchanter as they can basically do whatever they want in the bot lane with um little to no repercussions yeah it's one of the safest like first picks you could ever pick because she goes well with like basically any comp yes yeah, she can like support the engage or she can play something a little bit more counter engage as well alongside just being an enchanter and making sure your adc or whoever else just needs a couple buffs and yeah able to keep the uh any team alive and happy Mm hmm. With the the Lulu showing themselves, though, uh, Storm Riders had an immediate answer, as we saw with the Jin Morgana. Um, that one's gonna be a fun pick. I think that the I was uh, kind of condoning and saying how I really like Jins with like people with good wave clear, um, and I think a Morgana is just a fine pick with the utility that she brings um, with the Black Shield with the CC. I really like that combination of the two. Exactly. We saw earlier in the day we had a Jin paired up with a Karma, who by, by all means was playing extremely well, but given what he was able to do in that lane, he wasn't able to do much at all. So hopefully with a more aggressive pick like the Morgana, they can chain their CCs on top of each other, maybe get a lot of things done, and hopefully snowball the game from there. So that's why they picked it. Mm -hmm. And you know what gets even spicier? When I look over back to the Orn squad there, Twitch Jinx there. I'm always... See, whenever I see Twitch Jungle... I'm always torn sometimes because I feel like it's a faster uh, feast or famine, sorry, kind of a uh, jungler where you can get super far ahead and be in like basically a menace all game or do nothing. So really excited to see they must be really confident with this pick and I'm really excited to see how um, they play into this. And then obviously the Karthus finishing up the first round of bans there. But how do you feel about uh, actually Twitch, Twitch jungle? Uh, Twitch jungle is actually insanely strong like throughout all the games surprisingly because he's able to get stealth ganks early game like I've seen so many level twos that even I keep falling for and it's just so much damage you don't expect because his poison does so much if you're going for the AP routes if you're going the AD route you'll take so many autos and you can't get away because of course he's behind you if he's ganking you and the only downside Twitch jungle has is that he is squishy. Mm -hmm. And other than that, he's just good to go. I, what I really like about this Twitch pick here is that you can't tell whether he's going mid or jungle. Mm, so, that's a uh, fair they, point, yeah. Had to pick a Karthus, like, despite all that. And that was really smart of them. Yeah, and yeah, and again, like you said, you don't know if it's going jungle or mid. So I really like, yeah, that's a really good point, actually. And with the Karthus also being able to flex, it really brings a lot more dynamics into our second round rotation where we see the Orn squad actually banning Orn. Is that, I feel like, is that against the rules? Can the Orn Academy really be banning Orn here? <laughs> they've shunned their own false prophet, and they're taking a different path now with uh, Shen instead. They're, they're going under the Shen code now. Yeah. 
<laughs> All jokes aside, Orin's a really good band against Alpha. Um, Alpha is able to is known as the is a really good Scion pick actually. Um, and like Orn being taken away really forces him into a little bit of a corner for his champion pool. So I really like how they uh, played this one out. And obviously, even their um, uh, Ari pick there. I know that um, the uh, Valantiono is also an Ari main. So really good picks, really good bands coming out from the side of the Orn Academy. Um, on the flip coin of that, we have Storm Riders panning. It looks like uh, top laners, possibly even supports. Don't want to see Pantheon. Don't want to be seeing Sad again. We, t <laughs> I mean, we don't have we don't have the lucky pick, you know. But uh, oh wait, yes, we do. <laughs> lucky well, pick we is do. we do we do have the lucky pick. I'm just looking at our team now. He's 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 the support. So um, don't have the set um, that's going to be popping in this game, but. Um, it's going to be interesting to see as we see the Velkaz Nasus versus the Kasten and Shen. A lot of great scaling, a lot of good... Um, I think we were talking about this actually earlier, you and I, where we said you kind of want to have a kind of an out clause when you get into late game. And you really want to have that late game champion somewhere in your dynamic. Mm -hmm. And I think Stormrider's uh, draft here was also kind of smart because this Morgana could also... It could go mid, it also could go bot, and this card this could go jungle, mid, or support. And after that, they just throw on the Velkaz because they know exactly what comp they want. Alongside the Nasus, putting this amazing top laner onto another tank champion that can scale up and can ruin enemy teams. So you don't exactly know exactly what to build against these guys, because they do so much AD damage and so much AP damage. Mm-hmm. Very well said, and I'm actually kind of excited to see uh, how they bring it onto the rift. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Alrighty, let's unpause on three. One, yep. two, three. All right. Um, looking at both teams, looking at some of the runes, very just kind of classic. I don't see any main um, worries or changes here as well. Um, just off of just looking at it, right? So I'm not sure if we'd want to go into an invade, but it looks like they're going to try to. They have the more Q ready. They have the Velkaz damage as well, and so much follow up as well. But Kage is able to spot that out, is able to react on time and <gasps> get out safely. They do take a ward yep. as their little trophy gift back home, but that's all they're able to get as that invade is not going as planned. Mm hmm. You know, extra gold top side. You're getting that. That Nasus is going to scale just that a little bit faster. Unfortunately, <laughs> he did not stack that ward. Otherwise, he oh, plus three. But oh. he did get ten gold from that. Yeah, we take those. We take. It's just the little things in life, you know. <laughs> um, while we were, you might snowball that lead. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, while we were talking though, we actually saw Shen um, go in to the enemy jungle as they saw the invade and put the uh, ward down deep into the uh, red pit there. So we will have a vision and knowledge to know where they are going to be on the map. So really good uh, macro plays and uh, good team dynamics there uh, from Wookie. It was smart of. Uh... Cassid and Enshen knowing, oh, they're invading and there's nothing we can do about it. We'll just grab some vision and hopefully find out where this card this is starting. Mm -hmm. And what I really want to point out is that we thought the Morgana was going to be paired with this uh, Jin, but it's actually the Velkaz, who's even more of an aggressive pick. And hey. hopefully can do even more damage against this uh, Lulu here, who probably can't shield at all if they get caught by a single skill shot. Yeah, uh, Bruno also being a really good Velkaz, so oh, it's going to be... Watch oh. out for a second, because there's actually a Twitch gank at level 2. This is what we're talking about here. So much damage, that's 6 stacks, but unfortunately, that is not going to kill. Will it, though? No, the potion's oh. able to withstand that damage. The Contaminate doing so much, but also, it's only a level 2 Twitch, and unfortunately, Kassadin's not going to be able to do much in that fight. Yeah, really just not enough damage. Kassan also being a late game champion. Not really uh, great in those early uh, engages, but uh, Twitch is at it again. Yep, he's not stopping there. There's so much damage right now. There's a counter right here because Twitch is doing so much damage, but is not able to do so much because Kage and Alien Roll actually got picked out quite a bit earlier on in that fight. 
So uh, unfortunately, it was a little too late. Otherwise, uh, that might have gone really well. But the opposing or Twitch's teammates were a little bit too low on HP there. That's really unfortunate for the Twitch. You see those two great ganks, great positions, and just no reward for it. That's going to set them so far behind. And Karthus also being a really good uh, clear uh, in the jungle yeah. is going to be go. so hard for him to get back. This Karthus just ran straight from red to his Krugs and realized, oh, Twitch is coming from his red. I can just take this entire top side for free and have so much of my jungle left over. Look at the farm right now. It's 4 to 16. Karthus has almost completed his scuttle, that too. That's going to be 4 for 20. And we see Twitch now popping up. It's probably able to smite it away. There we go. And unfortunately, this Karthus is not able to get that scuttle crab because Twitch, definitely a sneaky rat. Can see him coming. Yeah, really sneaky. Got it. Got the... The... The, the scuttle but um is it worth it uh baby scuttle right now just doesn't provide oh, enough so experience Ooh. from the gin that flash was just barely out of reach could have gotten kage but nikki just a little bit too far off it was a really good play early on too but yeah both bot or both bot laners a little bit low now they do have lots of summers left though Oh, Bruno, he will. Oh, he's so thirsty. He's like, I want it. I want it. Oh, that direction was amazing. Island on roll did not see that coming. He still had to heal and flash up, but not predict that angle would come out from Bruho right now. That was amazing. Yeah, and another Twitch gank there, you know. Um, Great uh, job from uh, Bruho getting onto the uh, jinx there. And uh, geometry. Uh, picture perfect. You see something in your textbooks. Um, that being said, though, they're running very low on mana, and they're really subjected to a Twitch gank now, so it'd be best if they do a possible recall here. Yeah. It's fine for them. They're crashing the wave in. They got a kill. They got all they need for this, because right now they've survived the Twitch gank, and they've also got their own little kill in the early game. And I'm just kind of befuddled about this now, because... How, how is the Kassadin supposed to scale into this comp? Yes, it's late game insurance. Yes, you have a Shen with him. But the game would have been so much more different if that Twitch ganked for uh, someone with more engage instead of a Kassadin. Because that could have been first blood on mid earlier. Meanwhile, we have a fight top lane now. Alpha actually taking a lot of damage. Gets slowed by the Spirit Sword, but is able to get away. Nothing popped except for the Shen Ignite. And is able to freeze this wave a little bit. Maybe that's what he was after all the whole time. Mm -hmm. That's a really good call from Wookie Warrior here to be able to freeze that wave. Really unlucky for Alpha not being able to crash the wave and getting that free back here. But with the cannon minion wave coming up, I would expect to see him spamming E or spamming these minions down as fast as possible just before that Twitch shows up. Because now I'm wondering now, yes, Twitch is an extremely strong pick. And like individually, their champions are extremely strong on this side. But who does he really gank? Does he gank the Shen? For the uh against the nasus he can't really do so much damage to a nasus this morgana unfortunately has the root and of course Cassin is not going to do too much early game and bot lane does not have an engaged support they have a lulu which can speed twitch up actually there's a lot of action happening across the map twitch is actually caught out here he does have the flash though but he's only just pelting autos compared to this Karthus damage shen is actually gonna try to help him here but does get withered right now and he's getting caught out by so many cues it's getting flashed on by Alpha Y is not able to block that damage. Alpha with another or with his first kill onto the Shen right now. The bonkening. It begins. <laughs> uh, stage one right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not even his final form. Uh yeah, that's something you don't want to see uh, against into a Nasus. Um like you were talking about before, where does the Twitch gank? Shen probably his best option there. Probably a really good job on him to get into that. Oh, as we're talking right now, though. Shen ult comes in straight over and goes for the Jin right now. He's trapped between these traps and the Jinx. The Jinx does have to force her heal just to make sure she stays alive. But Nikki is dead on that Jin. There was nothing he could do once that Shen ult came in. Yeah, let's uh break that one down. Getting the free gold, you like as a Shen when you're using your TP. He brought ignite this lane because he wanted to win it. As a Shen, you want to win your lanes. You should be destroying any lane opponent when you're picking Shen, just because the fact that you're roaming, you have to be able to be okay 
with the a little bit extra gold and the if you don't get rewarded with your t or your uh, ulti plays you're going to be set so far behind and it's really scary especially when you're facing into a nasus lane as a shen exactly now karthus all coming in i'm not sure if he wanted to kill that jinx but it's a little bit far off from killing jinx there and we can see also the twitch actually stealing away karthus's red buff i don't think he's even touched his own red buff at all this game but Right now, he's claiming objectives for his own. He's going to get some level 6 soon, and the game is transitioning very slowly to the mid game right now, where Kassadin has a 20 CS lead over this Morgana. Yeah, the next stages that I'm thinking are going to be occurring is going to be the dragon take. Going to be seeing the same of this, like, like similar things that have been occurring the entire time, where Twitch goes, he ganks, and then everyone walks away. And then <laughs> Karthus yeah. farms. Right now we're seeing a huge disparity between two junglers where they are just farming constantly. And the gold difference actually is amounting to maybe a couple kills Karthus worth. taking the dragon, but that means Twitch is able to come topside. Alpha Y is actually running towards the Twitch, trying to chase him off, but unfortunately not able to catch up to him. Twitch is able to take that kill because he knew everyone else was on the bot side at dragon. Well played to him, and... It's slowly but steadily getting the Shen back into the game. Ah uh, yes, the Twitch gank pays off, baby. <laughs> it's, yeah. He's he's tried and tried again. It hasn't been working, and it's been making me feel scared and worried about where he is going to be in the next stages of the game. But as we say this, here's the on the bot side. There's the laser as well. So much damage. The Jinx has to flash away from the rest of the laser just to make sure her health bar was healthy but she was full health once that curtain call came out it's crazy how much damage this deals uh, and that flash goes through this time but unfortunately it's shielded away nikki again with an unfortunate flash it does not pay off for him but so much damage coming onto this jinx right now we've actually got a uh, twitch here on the side mm -hmm. and cassidy coming on as well he's already started teleporting in to reach his stacks Jin and bruho right now trying for their lives to get away or maybe just sneak a Sneaky kill onto this Lulu, not able to catch up, tries to hit him, but unfortunately does not get that damage. And Creek just annihilated that Bruho right now. What an another great success for the Twitch. You take those, you get the kills. This is exactly what you need. This is how you set your jungle Twitch online. You give him those kills, give him those ganks, and he's just going to keep going at it. He's going to keep doing this over and over and over again. Um, quick break, though. Uh, Nasus is fighting a Shen. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, skerfuffling going on in the top side because these guys are trading health bars left and right. I'm not sure if it's working out for either of them, but there's another Karthus ult coming in. I'm not sure if that's just to prep the Nasus or something. Nasus does ult himself, so they were definitely looking to go on the Shen, but unfortunately, Shen did have his dash up. I'm not sure they calculated that, so he's able to get away, forcing two ults for himself. Mm -hmm. Jin doing a lot of damage. You can see how much this Jin's doing, but unfortunately his scoreline is not paying off. He's putting so much pressure onto this bot lane, but this is not exactly going well for him despite all that. We've got a Karthus coming in, but there's actually Twitch behind him now. Bot side is going to be looking a little spicy here. Kage is speeding himself up, but he gets caught by the wall. The heals come out, the flash comes out, the shields, and... Look at the counter engage. We've got the Twitch and the Cassidy coming right behind these guys. There is a Shen ult too. And everyone's in this bot lane right now. Ruho is getting taunted. This Karthus is getting completely routed out of his escape plan. And does Ruho make it out? Shen actually almost dies to the curtain call. Just oh no. Barely lives. No! He is backing on that corpse. You can't do that against the Karthus. He is taken down as well. Just a one for one in that play, which is crazy to me. Yeah, great time. Um, good one for one there. Uh, the Shen following <laughs> just because uh, he forgot. I guess I guess he just forgot. It happens to the best of us, and I, I would have made the same mistake too, honestly. But um, got a mid play right now. Morgana actually flashing, but just barely gets away there. That damage almost being able to take her down. She was almost killing the Cassidy there. Just a solo kill against the two O Cassidy, but Twitch is there to save the day and make sure that. Morgana pays with her summoner spells. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, a lot, a lot of stuff to break down right now. Um, 
I, I'm just going to actually just talk about how Nasus has been able to free farm topside and is now accumulating more of a lead that way. Um, Look at this though, he actually gets taunted and takes a tower shot, the ignite comes out, Wookie Warrior, you're actually taking a lot of damage yourself right now, you don't have anything up. Alpha Y is able to fight his way out of that situation right now. There is a Jinx rocket coming in, it does not land, Alpha Y barely does not kill, Karthus ult is not up yet, Alpha Y still smacking this tower. Both junglers are in the vicinity, but Twitch is taking the Herald. I don't think Alpha Pig sees this himself, so everything just about boils down to what was that for? <laughs> what a great play from Alpha Y there, flashing forward, dodging the Jinx ulti. I think he would have actually been executed and killed if he landed that. Oh, Karthus ulti! Oh, that oh! shield comes in just enough to avoid that Leandri's damage, otherwise that would have killed him there. We have Twitch in the top side though. He might actually get caught out here. Twitch flashes away off screen, and he does get the Herald summon, but does he even get any gold from that? Because Alpha Y came, he teleported back just to make sure that didn't happen. That was a really good play from both Alphas there. Mm-hmm. Alpha top side, you know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that was really well done by both teams. Good macro plays. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get the result of a Rift Herald there, which is really unfortunate before the 14-minute mark because that's a lot of gold to someone's pockets. Um, trying to force it onto Shen, trying to force it when you know the Karthus top side is a little bit risky. And now that the Dragon is up, we're going to see possibly another team fight. Yeah, we see a lot of spicy stuff. And more spicy stuff in the top side as Wookie Warrior does miss the taunt and does take a bit of damage back. Alpha Y doing so much damage now. Wookie Warrior does not have really defensive options to go except for like maybe some health and armor, but Alpha Y able to stack up very freely and even do some aggressive plays. That's half of Wookie's Warrior's health, and he just came back to lane. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now everything's going back to lane and we got Mountain Dragon up, Twitch is focusing bot side. We've gotten a, two solo kills, or two kills on towards the Kassen, which is going to be terrifying, because later on, when Kassen gets more and more on, online, he's going to be a massive force for their team. And uh, right now, the Orn Academy looking pretty strong, even though the lanes are in um, pretty, uh, how would I say, submissive. <laughs> positions. Yeah. <laughs> that word has changed a lot recently. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta play it right now though. Twitch is not being submissive. He's being dominant against this Jin right now. Jin has to steal and flash to get away from both those missiles. He answers back with his own curtain call as Karthus is in the area. Just hoping to clear out the wave. Hoping that nothing else bad happens. But that is a successful Twitch gank for both Sums and Jin's health bar. Hopefully maybe they can just try to force a dragon here, but with the Velikaz full mana and this Karthus in position, there's not much to do. Twitch is going again with the Lulu, but that trap barely slowed him in time, and he's not able to get anything. That's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Karthus ulti coming down. Karthus is ulting basically off cooldown now. I don't know if he's just do doing this to pressure people, or if he's really just looking for opportunities across the map. Actually, it might be as bot lane goes and engages, that laser doing a lot of damage but not able to sh finish off Kage. Maybe that's why uh, the Karthus ult came out, but it's not successful as both the top tower and the mid tower for Orin's Academy fall. Karthus actually getting caught out right now. Alpha Pig trying to fight his way away from this Car uh, Kassadin is finally able to tag him and maybe even get one more as that Twitch is barely able to get out of there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My theory is definitely why is Karthus ulting off of cooldown going to be the, for the first strike rune. Obviously, that's going to be a lot of gold in his pockets. No one's going to be able to hit him, and he's definitely a farming-style jungler. Um, typically, you might usually see maybe like a Dark Harvest, but because he has first strike, he's just getting as much economy as possible. Um, great job getting that kill, even though dying, but we got a bot lane fight coming up here. Never mind. <laughs> Back to my topic. <laughs> so, um, they really wanted to get at that that um, dragon, but couldn't because of the um, of the Karthus being able to go in, doing as much damage as possible, and he's going to get his mythic. He's doing a little bit more, and he's going to become a bigger force later on as well. Into got the Cassidy actually engaging Ooh. onto this Morgana. 
forces her flash out, but he's still going. He does a lot of damage. The barrier comes out, but Cassidy actually gets rooted for so long enough for Alpha Pig to come in and secure that kill. Here comes the Twitch, though. The only Mr. EO comes in and just <laughs> annihilates the Morgana, but gets annihilated in return. Rooted right on top of those defiles. Right now, there's a bot lane fight as well. It's a two versus one. Nikki on the Jin doing so much damage, forcing both summer spells from the Jin or from the Jinx, even through the Lulu shields. And that should be an easy dragon for Storm Riders. Mm -hmm. Storm Riders taking that dragon, getting that dragon lead, and Ocean Drake coming up here. That's going to be big for them. That's going to help them uh, become the big invincible Nasus as they have now. Um, Shen is falling further and further behind with the uh, CS difference, and that's why you see a lot of Storm Riders, even though the kills favor um, Orn Academy here, the pure goal value and CS difference on almost all of their laners is why they have such a sub such a big difference in uh, the gold there. So um, probably going to be seeing a lot more of the same things. Uh, what we might want to see a little bit more of from the Orn Academy is uh, they have great Mako Pry. Their communication is amazing, but they just need to work on their micros a little bit, get those the CS numbers up a little bit more, and get that Kassin even further online. He's pretty huge right now. Twitch is per, is online, getting a lot of kills, but they are going to be your two main carries. Jinx is a really good bot laner and a really good hyper carry, but they're also falling behind on CS, so there's lots of things that you need to do, but also you can't take away from the kills from Twitch or else he becomes useless, like I was saying, Feast or Fam and Jungler. Thankfully, he does have a lot of kills now, is able to equalize with this Karthus, despite being at a little bit of a deficit gold-wise, he's able to put so much pressure on the map and makes so many plays happen, securing summoner spells, securing kills, and once uh, late game starts rolling, Storm Rider's health bars are still going to be pretty small. This Twitch, with a Shen on top of him, with a Lulu on top of him, is going to do so much damage to them if he comes out at a right angle, so... Unfortunately, Storm Riders here has to play the defensive in these types of fights because you never know where this very strong Twitch can come from. Mm -hmm. That's very true. That Twitch can honestly change the whole course of a team fight just by coming in at a good angle and getting his full ulti off on all of them. And he's going to be definitely their Nasus killer as uh, it's going to really just be so crucial for Twitch to have perfect positioning where Nasus can't wither you and can't hit you with a Q. Yeah. <laughs> right now he can kind of go unchecked because no one on their team other than the Nasus can really dive onto this Twitch. You got the Morgana who is probably going to be running away and being focused down. But look at that Ooh. shit with the Flash Gale Force and that final auto attack is able to secure an easy kill on that Jinx. Kage didn't even have time to ult. He only pressed his shield, but it was not enough. Meanwhile, on the boss side, we got the Twitch flashing over and the Shen ult coming as well. There's nothing that Valentino can do here. We've got the Wookiee Warrior. Oh, he can actually put down so much damage. Is able to take no. him down with Leandri's Torment. What a counterplay. And now, Wookiee Warrior running away now. Is able to avoid a lot of damage. Has to flash out from the remaining damage, though. As that play completely backfired as Valentino... Makes a huge upset there. What a great play from Valentino to not only secure and kind of make the trade possible, but also I'm going to give kudos to Storm Riders' communication skills as they were able to really communicate, get everyone rotated down there, and they may have been able to do a little bit more if they just... Oh, look at this now. Cassin actually having to flash away from this Nasus. Look at the health difference. That was one fight in Cassin's basically dead alpha y just healing away has to back off once again if this nasus had his flash back up he, you know he would have gone for that meanwhile the jinx actually in melee range of the velkos right now gets exhausted gets lasered down and is just completely shredded by that last bullet and dancing grenade great plays all around um Quick question. Let me go uh, check on Nasus real quick. Uh, Nasus, what uh, what's your stacks at here? We got oh 450. Ah, yeah, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he does so much damage alongside the Divine Sunder. He's able to freely farm top even with the Twitch pressure because Karthus has been doing so much on the other side of the map and supporting him as well. So this Nasus feels free to do whatever he wants, and the only thing he wants to do is farm up and hit opponents, and that's what he's been doing.
Mm -hmm. Great farming, doing pretty good. Um, just I think they're about averaging around seven to eight CS per minute right now. Um, doing a good job of playing Nasus. They're hitting Q effectively. Yeah. <laughs> But the main thing with NASA is, especially when NASA is in a competitive environment, you have to focus on your positioning and where you're going yep. to be uh, going and communicate that with your team. Because if you don't, um, you're just playing solo queue NASA and it could get you in pretty bad spots uh, with a team that knows what they're doing against you. You can see his damage right now. He's just chasing these guys down. Valentino gets him with the Leandre's Torment. This NASA is doing so much damage. How do you stop Alpha? Why? There is a frozen art heart on him. And what does the Twitch do? He can only run. The only Mr. EO is only running right now and cannot get away. Look at that. Wow. Even while you were talking, this Nasus was tanking it up like <laughs> three champions worth of damage and just completely ran them down basically solo alongside the Karthus alt and the Morgana. Just so much he can do to an enemy team right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> Reese. I'm looking at the chat right now. He says NASA seems interactive, and I was like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> but um, NASA's top side here getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And as I was explaining, you need good communication with your team. Storm Riders delivered that with that dragon play. They rotated everyone towards that NASA. They knew that they were collapsing on them, and so without that knowledge of um, having your team there. That Nasus could have been picked off solo. There are so many different options, and then they get a free dragon. Great job on the Orn Academy, but even better communication coming from Storm Riders there. So um, excited to see what they're going to do next as they're now on Soul Point. If they get Ocean Soul, that's going to be my stamp, you know, sending them, sending them home. That's going to be the the, the the nail in the coffin for me, as a Nasus would basically never be able to die ever <laughs> you can play solo Nasus and nothing will happen he's just huge right now and he's just so many stacks actually Nasus, where are you come here let me show show me show me your secrets uh, 504 <laughs> yeah, yeah game, that'll do it that cannon's very nice 519 you were saying he was good in solo queue but in competitive as well with the fully functional team behind his back he knows exactly his limitations and what he can do for his team and how he can destroy the enemy team I was about to say, oh my god, that wow. is doing half of that HP bar, even with the Lulu there. Jin going for a Gale Force is not close enough to pull that off, though. But man, this damage. The curtain call falls through. Thankfully, there is the Guardian. Thankfully, there is so... Oh my, my god. My word. Please, leave them be. <laughs> How do you play Jinx right now? How do you deal with this team comp? The Twitch is not even here because he's also half health from that ultimate. What do you even do? He's going in for it. He is getting three autos. If he got another one off, that was going to be a kill. Oh my god. Oh my Incredibly goodness. Forward flash. That Q goes off the file hits. But look at this Cassidy. That's two kills before the Shadow even comes in. And Alpha Pig has nowhere to go. He does flash the wall. He is hitting Qs, but it is not enough. Freak on the Cassidy. Saving that play and hopefully saving the game. Let's go, Garrick. That turns everything around. That was a great job. Uh, side note, Nasus, very scary topside. Great play mid. But we have something that the elephant in the room is the dog with the stick. And <laughs> what are we going to do with that? We have to. He's more than an elephant. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, what stage is he at? If we were like in Dragon Ball Z, you know, what if he was like Frieza, which form is he on right now? We'd have to invent new ones by the end of this game. He's going <laughs> completely off right now. Yes, there is a Fed Cassidy, but we haven't seen these two, the Nasus and Cassidy. We've seen those two fight each other, and it did not look pretty for Cassidy. He's able to clean up the squishies because there are so many squishies on Storm Rider's side. They've got the Jin, the Morgana, the Karthus, the Velkaz. Cassidy can kill them all. Oh no. Ease. I think he dies. Damage. Oh my goodness. Alpha Pig. Him. Yeah, that just kills him. Oh my goodness! Alpha Three with the most alpha of plays presses that R button, and the only Mr. EO just explodes. That flash just does not get him anywhere because that all comes from wherever you are. Oh my! So I'm trying to figure out a method. Trying to think. How do you position your players accordingly to fight off Storm Riders right now? Because oh, they are just getting no, bigger. 
they just destroyed this Jinx right now. Oh she only my. took a single Q from Velkaz, and that snowballed into a root from the Jin, a Q from the Karthus, and then just the Gale Force, and then Nikki takes that kill. Meanwhile, Alpha Y almost just destroys this cast and would have been a kill if it weren't for Kage right there. Because right now we've got Alpha Pig actually getting engaged on as well, is able to be taken down, but that's a trade kill as well. It's only a one for one that only Mr. EO can do. The Shen ult was up, but could not be used at that time as he was getting chased off as well. And right now we're seeing Ord Academy's base falling. We're going to see another just show put on oh. by Alpha Y. You can see why he pulled so many top lane bans. He's flashing on the Cassidy, and he's chasing down in a 3v1 right now. Nikki versus the Jinx right now as well. Alpha finally dies, but man, that damage was huge. Oh Creek is able to pick that kill up because the Jin was left alone. And we see if anything else is left. Valentino stopping this Cassidy's rampage for now. Thankfully, because he was very strong. Mm -hmm. Cassidy and big this game, and... This is this is the this was my ceiling moment here. And Alpha, like the Alpha Gang, the Alpha Pig, Alpha Y, they're huge. They're playing the games like in taking complete control, as well as Stormrider's ability to position each other, putting them in very um various positions where they're in only favorable matchups, right? And it's so yeah. hard for Orn Academy to position better in most of these scenarios but look at this right now because they played so aggressive okay there is a pick onto kage's lucky pick he is not getting picked out though because he's going to survive that no card is out to come through and is able to survive that but the main picture is despite getting an inhibitor storm riders did lose their nasus they did lose their Jin, and they did lose their chance to grab that ocean soul which is huge they basically gave that away to orn academy yeah, and as Orn Academy, that's the plays you want to make. Those are the positions you want to be in. They do still have. Wait, what? What's Alpha doing? Alpha, are you? Just he's just doing down. this alone. Alpha is this allowed? Is it? <laughs> he can't. Okay. He can't keep getting away with this. He really can't. Well, there are. There is no vision at all right now. He's the closest thing that can happen is Jinx hitting that code of vision but he, she does not do that she's still hitting the ground baron's already at half hp no one's even near right now you can see the twitch in the mid lane they have no idea what's going on or they just don't want to contest that and i'm not sure which is scarier i i did, i'm i'm a loss for words he just got away with that he just was able oh, to just his bonk his way to get a baron yeah Oh my he is goodness. He's just gonna take over this game along with this Karthus damage. Just. Ah! Ah! They have to back. What do you do? <laughs> if he saves that for a fight, you guys are doomed. We've got two Leandries along with the Morgana and the Nasus that just does so much damage. And what do you even do when the Karthus cult comes in? Because as a Jinx, as a Lulu, as a Twitch, even though the Twitch is playing so well. He's getting chunked out for so much of his health bar. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got some shenanigans going on over here. Uh, Bush gameplay. Let's see what Three. goes on here. Might be the only saving factor for this game. He does so much damage. Uh -oh. and he's so slippery. The curtain call comes out. Island on roll tanking so much of that. Has to gale force out. Kage is taken down. Huge snipe from Nikki Getting that deadly flourish on. And that's... A complete engage. Another Gale Forest play made. Wookie Warrior barely getting away, but not away enough. The filed down. Double Zanyas. The Twitch is going off right now, and Creek is doing so much damage to save the game, but it's another defile. That is a crazy team fight, and the only survivor is Nikki. Wow. Oh. What can you say? What an incredible team fight. Orn Academy did what they could. Orange Forge Esports Academy did an amazing job just kind of holding off as best they could, but Storm Riders come on top, they scaled, they positioned well, and even after the the fall from the top lane, Nasus, in that play, he just threw his body out there, was able to get those objectives, the Baron Bluff minions are coming in, Kira couldn't do much, he got as many kills as he possibly could, was in the back, probably in the best position he 
could be in that team fight. But we see Storm Riders taking advantage and taking the victory here. And what a incredible performance by them. Um, let's quickly talk about our MVPs and aces there. So um, let's go over our ace here. So on the side of Orange Forge Esports Academy, who are you uh, going to be giving that ace to? That, uh, it could go to a couple people here. And by that, I mean Twitch and the Kassadin. But I will have to give it to the Kassadin because he played basically to all his strengths and made sure he did not give any needless deaths. He was able to roam bottom lane, and despite bottom lane not being too ahead, he got some kills for himself, and was able to assassinate the enemy team so many times, turning so many fights around, and almost saving that last fight at the end there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. He, he did a great job on Kasten. Excited to see what he's going to be proling out next game as well. Uh, for me, I'm going to talk briefly on the MVP. I want to... I wanna, see... Nasus's scoreline isn't huge, but he was constantly able to communicate with his team, constantly able to bring three plus members to his lane where Cassidy can farm. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Karthus could farm safely as well as your bot lane, your Jin. They were getting stronger and stronger. So as you're distracted with the Nasus, their macro play. I'm not sure if I can even give MVP um to a person this game i'm just kind of want to give it to a macro positioning like the whole storm riders gang themselves really stepped up here and did a great performance but if i was to give it to an individual i'm going to be giving it to the the 500 stack dog you know nasa's played really well alpha played really really well yeah he just played so much into the top side and just got so much pressure from the enemy team and just annihilated anything that came across his path in the bot side fight where they were fighting over a dragon he just ran at the enemy with no care and took barely any damage and yeah tanked up so much there's nothing you can do as a jinx as a lulu maybe the caster could fight him oh wait he could not so alpha y getting away with a huge nasus pick there was so good for the team mm -hmm. i completely agree um we're gonna take a quick break and we'll come back to game two of Storm, uh, Storm Riders versus Orns Forge uh, Esports Academy.
Hello and welcome back, SEAL fans. We are going into game two between Orns Forge Esports Academy versus Stormriders. What a good like matchup that was last time. Really great team. Uh, both teams really showing off uh, incredible macro plays. Like um, Stormriders taking the upper hand uh, in the match there, but that does not um, discredit any of. Uh, Orn Forge Esports Academy, the plays that they made, especially the early game performances, the constant like Twitch ganks last game as well, were pretty crazy. And I'm super excited to see what they're going to be giving us this time around. Do you have any other takeaways from uh, last game and what we might see a lot more this game? Yeah, last game, I feel like there were a couple flaws in um, Orn Academy's comp. I feel like, yes, they had the Twitch and the Jinx as both like uh, units they could use for the Shen and Lulu to funnel, but I feel like it was not gonna turn out as they planned because Jinx was not able to do anything against you know their comp, getting one shot by Cassidy or not Cassidy, one shot by Karthus, one shot by Jin, and one shot by the Valkaz. You can't just put a Jinx into like any comp and expect it to work. I feel like if they had an Ash or something like that, that would have been a lot better to catch out their squishy targets and make sure that Twitch got ahead instead of uh, putting their eggs in too many baskets, I would say. Mm, very well said. And without further ado, let's actually see how they transitioned and did a little bit of a little tweaks here and there uh, over on to our picks and bands. So looking at that now, actually. So first round rotation, we see Orange Academy taking off the Karthus. That was a big one. Really great yeah. band there. Take that out of there because that was crippling last game absolutely crippling like you were saying before like he was just press alty and half your hp is gone like what do you do right like yeah. <laughs> uh, he off spawn, and he didn't even really save it for a specific fight i feel like he was going to do that later but he didn't need it for any specific fight because the poke was just so good that his team could just capitalize on that and make so many picks it felt like they had a little you know those little sand timers on the side they just kind of kept flipping it and anytime r was up they just pressed the button yeah, exactly. <laughs> um but they also continue the bands against the ergot against the um scion i would maybe switch up ergot with nasus here but it's still fine you still don't want to show too much and you still want to take away that ergot pick as it could be a really powerful pick for storm riders on the side of storm riders banning out leblanc banning out Kasten, that was a big problem banning out the twitch that was also good so they adapted as well um not really like adapted towards the gameplay what happened last time so yeah. the, it's it, it's good to see teams do this and it shows uh almost a respect and a like top the like, tip of hat to the other team as they're like yeah that was a menace last game i don't want to see that you know so a really good there first pick lux great flex pick you can bring it mid you can bring it support you know so really like what they they don't really show much off of that but now, I believe, uh, JTEC, you are an Anivia main, I believe, yeah? That is correct. Yes. yes. I've played Anivia for several years now, and we've been through our ups and downs. So you must know a lot of what's about going to happen with this Anivia pick here. I know Keurig is actually, I played on a team with him last season, and he plays Anivia well. It's one of his mains as well, so it's a really strong comfort pick here, and I'm really excited to see what they offer to the table uh, like team wise and i'm really excited to see how they build a team um comp around their mid laner because cassidy was a menace last game if you build around this player you can have such a devastating game and have like, your opponents just it's just waiting to go next kind of thing so mm -hmm. really excited to see here uh storm riders picking up the vilkaz ezreal now that we see Velkaz, we made the mistake last game, but this game, this time around, when we see Velkaz, I think it's definitely going to go support again. So now we know Lux is going to go mid, Velkaz is going to go support, just because of comfort picks from the player's individual playstyle. Ezreal also being comfort pick for the Storm Riders ADC, and then finishing off the first round is the Leona. Very almost like cut and paste, we're seeing a lot of um, comfort picks. And honestly, comfort picks are way better than meta, in my opinion. Because you'd see in high elo play, you know, Victor's up, you see Corky up, they get first pick, no matter what. You know, this just Corky, we've seen time and time again with Corky package and the R just doing like 
70% of your HP bar from full HP just because he shot a rocket in a random direction and it happened to hit you. Um, yeah. But what yeah. we see from this Noxian, at least from the last games we saw previously today and now, uh, we're not seeing Corky. We're not seeing Victor. We're seeing comforts pick champions because they know how to play against these meta picks with their comfort picks. And I love it. I really like seeing teams do this and play around it because it adds so much more dynamic to the game, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, from the for very first though, round of the three champions, we see on Stormrider's side, they have so much pose. They're probably looking to like uh, get objectives and lots of stuff, make sure there's vision across the map. While on Orn Academy's side, we have Anivia and Leona, which are like huge pick champions right now, so they can actually catch one of these guys out and see if they can contest those areas by just engaging on one of their squishy champions. And we also see a Sivir, which is not a very common pick. I presume it's mostly for the movement speed, especially for their later picks, I see, because they also have the Sin Zhao and Pantheon, and they want to get close to the enemy team like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Sin Zhao, Pantheon, really good gap closers, really great engage support with the Leona and the Pantheon, who could just... You're you're not moving when it comes to yeah. Orn's Academy. Uh, they built a comp, and like I wanted before, they built the comp around their mid laner. That damage lockdown CC. I call I, I joke around saying Sivir is a glorified scuttle crab, but uh, she applies a lot of utility and even a lot of damage depending on which build they go, which we'll see as. Uh, uh, the game goes on but depending on how they build if they're going to do like fountain laser sivir you know with the uh, uh crack and slayer or if they're going to do like the poke sivir with the um the the dirks and everything along that side you know and so there's a lot of dynamic with sivir which is a lot of fun a lot of dynamic where they are protecting the mid laner and also having that um, massive amount of cc that you were talking about before so really like the draft that the orn forge esports academy made this game um, flipping the coin over to Storm Riders, we see in the second rotation, um, they did not let Alpha have a comfort pick. <laughs> there are four, yeah. four, they pointed all four fingers and said, no, 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 you're going to be on something uncomfortable. Alpha Y, uh, knowing him personally, has a pretty wide champion pool, um, but when you subject them into certain scenarios, it forces them into a corner. If any player gets four-person banned, it forces them into a corner. It forces them to play weak side. But he's picked up Renekton this game. Notorious lane bully. Notorious top lane. Just like like great gank. He's just basically uh, he's Camille but tankier. And that's what they needed on their draft here they needed someone tanky they need someone with lockdown and so you can produce the damage with the ezreal with the lux with the velkaz um a trundle pick i don't know how i truly feel about the trundle pick here uh you did see the Zen Zhao beforehand, so you don't have many tanky targets, but Trundle is an overall strong pick. We've seen him in the first series today against the set, just not dying, but I would rather see Trundle in a more tanky composition than what we see um, from Orn's Academy here. So I'm, I, I believe in Alpha Pig's ability to play this champion, but I wonder how it's going to interact with the, the Orn's Academy team themselves. Exactly, yeah. But that's all I can say. My rant is done. <laughs> Do you have any final notes before we jump into game? I mean, Orn Academy is not hiding who they want gone from this, uh, or weakened at least from their game, because if they had a gun with five bullets, they'd shoot Alpha Wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Uh, yeah, I want to see how he looks on his Renekton too, because this might be where he shows up and says, I can play any champion, just bring it. Yeah, that and it says a statement for the entire league itself, right? So, uh, let's jump into game and see how it all plays out. Alrighty, let's unpause on three. So, one, yep. two, three. Alrighty, getting into game here. 
I want to see a, a, a cheeky shenanigans coming out from the, the, the Orange Forge Esports Academy here. They have a lot of great lockdown, especially level one, that they might be able to pick up first blood before anyone uh, gets to do anything. Looks like there might be something happening here as the Lux is actually in mid lane, but there is a death bush just waiting there. And they're unfortunately spotted by the ward. Is able to make a little bit of money for the Velkas there. And Quick, hit him from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that was actually pretty good because Velkas got to hit two Qs there, making 40 gold. The Lux was able to get the Mana Flow stack, and Ezreal got 12 stacks on his tier, so we'll take those if you're um, Storm Riders right now. You know what happened when they got a lead last time, and it was only 10 yeah. gold. Now you okay, gave him 40. Well. <laughs> It'll be four times the stop, but we'll see about that. Oh, it's gonna be a good time. Um, going for jungle clears. It's gonna be traditional. They're gonna be pathing to the top side. I want to see Storm Riders path to the top side because Renekton, like I was saying, similar to Camille, when you have a Renekton lane, um, it's a very easy champion to gank for. So it's gonna be something uh, that you want to path to rather than path away from in most top lane scenarios. Yeah, exactly. We see uh, lots of poking going on from the top side here. Pantheon proving why he's an early game champion focused on single target damage, but a bit of damage from the Sivir as well. It does catch a stray bullet from Brujo. Again on the Velkaz, he was doing quite a bit of work, especially with his lasers. Mm -hmm. Velka is a uh, Brujo is doing really good. It, even last game, we saw a great performance from the Geometry Man himself as uh, he just kept shooting it and everyone kept running into it. It's almost like they're magnetized or something. There's actually a bit of action in the middle. Oh my god, Valentino just completely destroys Creek on this oh, no. Nibia. Unfortunately, not enough damage to take down the egg, but that's two summoners for an egg. I'll, I'll gladly take that any day. And Alpha Pig is actually here. This is a flashless Anivia, but is she able to get away in time? Yes, she is. And only Mr. Eo is also here to save the day. Mm-hmm. Luckily, like, um, actually, I want to hear your insights into the Lux versus Anivia matchup. Uh, you obviously playing Anivia a lot. You should know, like, how uh, this is going to play out for this Lux here. Yeah. Well, you saw, like, a bit of it already like through there and like that other engage as well. It's mostly just throwing CC at each other and just trading CC. Unless you're able to dodge one, mm -hmm. whoever dodges the CC is going to win the fight. That's <laughs> all there is to it. Oh my god. Whoa! Damn, coming from Krieg right now, with just coming straight from her egg, knowing that Valentino used flash for that, is able to use his own flash and capitalize on that for a cheeky first blood fast stun. You love to see it, and as a Nivea, they scale pretty well into the later stages of this game, so getting that first blood, getting that extra gold against the Lux uh, is really good for them. Yep, that's exactly why he didn't flash earlier, because he knew his egg was up, he knew he wasn't in any danger of actual death, so he saved it for just this moment, making sure he could get the first blood when Valentino didn't have his own. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um... Going off of that, we're going to see probably just traditional styles. I think the if you are going to be the side of Storm Riders, you're going to want to gank top. You're going to want to start getting more objectives as well. Because if you just let the Nivea do what they want, they're just going to keep getting uh, more and more powerful. And um, it it feels like dodgeball in the mid lane. But like you're saying, you know, just get, if you whoever dodges the, the the most abilities wins here. So yeah. Um, maybe some extra counter pressure coming in from the uh, Zinzao over onto the Trendle. Bit of action here in the bot lane, though. Uh, lots of damage coming through, also on the top lane as well. But both bot laners getting away. That's a huge amount of damage coming from the Pantheon empowered Q going onto the Trundle there. But that also means Wookie Warrior is going to be forced to back off as Alpha Ooh. gets back with full HP. That hits. Death to Moo hitting the longest range ease. That was an amazing play. And only Mr. EO gets to pick up that kill for basically free. Granted to him on a silver platter from Death to Moo on that amazing Leona engage. Yeah, that Leona was popping that time. And, uh, I, you know, hitboxes are neat. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't think that was going to hit either, but when it landed, you're like, all right, you take these. And <laughs> 
<laughs> they capitalized yeah. really well onto that. Exactly. Full faith on that Zenith blade. She praised the sun and the sun praised back, making sure he could get that get that stun off and everything onto the Ezreal, even with the summoners. And was able to get that kill for free, basically. And not only that, they were also able to get the first dragon of the game. That's going to be really good for them going further and not falling too far behind. They were pretty good on it last game where they got great early game uh, objective control. But this time around, you don't have those main big late game carries on the side of Storm Riders. So it, it oh, leaves God. me worried a little bit. Alpha actually expending his ult here. Gets the flash stun off. Is it enough damage to do Wookiee under tower? One auto did so much proc and press the attack, but it's not enough to finish the job. Alpha Y using both his ult and his flash, but not able to get that kill. Mm -hmm. He's going for it. Oh, this might <laughs> yeah, be misguided. Right. Oh, Wookiee Warrior, Wookiee Warrior. Oh my god. He capitalized on that mistake. Alpha Y taking a little bit too far of a dash there and ends up misstepping into the tower. Wookiee Warrior with his own flash still up. Is able to get a kill. Doesn't even need to ignite because he knows Alpha Y is dead there. Yeah, you didn't need to ignite there, which is really good, which saves him for another um, trade opportunity because of the uh, grievous wounds that uh, the ignite offers. Um, you want to escape this, Wookie? Oh. No, wait, wait. It could be a little bit of a bait because only Mr. E is here. I don't think uh, Alpha Y can fall for this one, though. He still has his dash up, but. Man, what a great play from Wookie Warrior. Mm -hmm. Of course, he was losing that fight initially, but when your opponent tanks two shower shots, you can take what you can get. That's an easy solo kill for him. Yeah, Pantheon can be really deceiving with its damage early as well. So uh, you really have to respect the Pantheon damage. You take the trades that you can, but you can't overextend. Look at that again. He's already igniting again. Does so much damage, but is not able to get any follow-up. Misses another Q. Does force Alpha Y to half HP under his stone tower so he can back safely. Only Mr. EO also in the area, but nothing's going to be done here. Yeah, looks like uh, another good trade for the Pantheon. Great way to uh, chip down the uh, Renekton. Renekton actually kind of staying in lane a little bit longer. Hopefully he gets his lane in a proper uh position for him to continue and have a safer back but uh look at this though brujo gets caught out by another zenith blade death to doing so much damage does so much and the boomerang blade comes out and is able to cleave just enough damage onto brujo island roll on a roll right now with that boomerang blade meanwhile another ultimate coming down from wookie warrior straight under the tower and that's an easy kill for him as he just shreds through alpha y so that's that why you ban him out and that's why you destroy him that was uh, one of my concerns about having that lane state there. Um, obviously, you need to be in a position where you have to like greed a little bit, but Pantheon reaped the rewards of that situation. Now we actually have a collapse yep. onto Look Alpha this. Pig. Alpha Pig, only level 5 now. No way to get out. Does have the flash, but is not able to escape that spear. There's so much damage. Anivio Creek actually just dodging another one. Still has his egg up, though, so even if that ult hits... It would just mean an egg being popped. Creek playing pretty well there, especially considering uh, uh, Lux was in the area, but getting that kill onto Trundle was huge for their team. Getting that Rift Herald as well for the Wookiee Warrior, who's already just steamrolling this top side, as you can see here, is able to maybe get some tower plates as well later on. Something I've noticed with the Orn Forge Academy Esports is their control of the early game and the oppression and how much they can really do and it is showing immensely this game they are doing a great job of performing this early game making sure they shut down their opponents and really playing around their strong suits there is another zenith blade he always hits these death to moon is the one exhausted but the damage here is coming from island roll ruho taking half his hp is stunned up once again but death to moon has to flash out of that one that's Boomerang Blade once again cuts straight through him and Death to Moon is straight no. back in it. It's able to dodge the Mystic Shot. That's an insane play from him. They're insane. <laughs> They're insane. They're insane. Yeah. He, he just straight, went straight back into the Ezreal, but Wookie Warrior onto another play onto Alpha Y gets another solo kill. It's unbelievable. Orn Academy doing so much work everywhere on the map. Unfortunately, though, Island Roll maybe stayed too far from that plate. He was able to flash away, but is countered by his own flash. Is he able to get away with that movement no. on the hunt? Giving him 
40% is enough escape even with the trundle flash. He gets away. Are you kidding me? Alion roll, are you kidding me? There's you greeted and got away with this? Like that's incredible. You um oh, Storm Riders, I'm sorry, you are in shambles right now. And Orange Ford Yeah, Orange Forge Esports Academy has been just they have their foot on the pedal and they refuse. They're on the Autobahn right now and they are just flying down that highway. Wow. <laughs> How crazy is it that you're a, a mobile ADC called Sivir and you agreed for a plate knowing that the mid and jungle are coming for you and the trundle has flash and you still get away with that. You block the master spark. You dodge the pillar basically with your flash and look at that. Another solo kill from Wookie Warrior just completely melting this top side. Oh no. Oh wait, who got that blue buff? In? Oh no, bot lane. Yeah, yeah, okay, no. Nope. Up bot lane here. Uh, the unroll. Actually, I have to get, to get out here. Death move gets flashed on by Nikki. Uh, the unroll still alive though. That's a huge play, and is able to catch out Death to move. Uh, the unroll. You cannot back there, man. That's not a safe place to back, especially since it was warded earlier, and there was nowhere for him to go. It just gives up a little too greedy there, and finally gets punished for it. That's really unfortunate that Nick did not get that kill. Oh, we have Pantheon, Wookie Warrior. Warrior, he does have flash. He ulted in for this. He wants to play on at least one of them. He does just straight up throws the javelin at him and gets the kill. Barely alive though. Will he escape Brujo? Brujo oh, not even wanting to contest. No. no, he does. He is able <sighs> to get it. There's no way to dodge that if you're running straight at him. Well played to Brujo there, just making sure that Pantheon. <laughs> Can't get away from that Q. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Brujo really uh, taking the victory there, getting two big shutdowns. I would have liked to see Nick get the kill onto Sivir, and that would have helped the late game Ezreal a lot. But you take what you can get. You can't turn back time. And so you got two kills on your Velkaz, which isn't the worst-case scenario. Velkaz is a huge damage dealer as well. Exactly. And now we can see that Orn Academy is actually getting punished. They finally got their first death, and alongside it came two more. All three from being a bit overzealous in their play. Leona getting too far out into the river, getting caught out there. Adlion Roll actually just backing in the worst spot imaginable. And Wookiee Warrior just diving for a kill that shouldn't have happened. That gives Storm Riders an access into this game right now. Ezreal getting stunned up here. Wookiee Warrior doing so much damage still. That should do it. Just one more Q, and that's a solo kill for free. Ow. Even this just wanted to get revenge one more time on the key. Yeah, he came back for seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dragon going to be coming up in two minutes. They're just picking people off, and they're just continuing the snowball effect and Wookiee Warriors Pantheon. I, I read in chat there, Wookiee is just playing great on Pantheon, and you're not wrong. Wookiee has been doing great this game, and on top of that, getting the scoreline that is just a monstrous, you know, 7 1 and 0. And a lot of the gold onto his team is actually from Pantheon here, so you gotta shut that thing down it does fall off later on but you gotta you gotta focus up and really kind of remember the fundamentals remember your macro plays and you slowly grab and grab and grab use those objective bounties that you're going to be getting get as many dragons as possible but no, this might be also wookie warrior on the boss side that's a 2v3 for them i don't think wookie warrior can find a way out of here he throws one last spear, but it does not connect onto brujo Unfortunately, Death to Move falls as well, but Valentino on the other side of the map also falls to the only Mr. Eo. Yeah, and uh, great job there. That's exactly what I wanted to see, actually. You know what? <laughs> I have no complaints from any of those plays. Um, you're sad to see Valentino die obviously but um bot side that's exactly what you wanted for the pantheon oh Look no at that damage his crease is gonna come up there it is one more e to do it that damage from the frostbite is able to take down the ezreal through the heal you cannot stand in that glacial storm but that ultimate 
is able to completely bring Anivia back down to her roots as an egg getting chewed up by Alpha Big Air. Is she able to get away? Does the wall up, but is able to get rooted, and the Flash is not able to save her. Alpha Pig ki picks up that kill with the Trundle and is able to get three kills now. Mm hmm. Good job, Alpha Pig, on uh, showing showcasing uh, Trundle's strength even in, in not the best conditions. You know, he's 3-1-2, and two, great performance on this. The only thing that's really, like, struggling with is obviously the clears, but how can you clear when there's just constant fights coming from the side of Orange Forge Esports Academy? Watch the Sinjao now, because Sinjao is actually coming right behind this Lux. She has no idea. Valentino is being caught out here, has no flash, and right now he's getting jumped on. Will he get away from this, actually? He's very fast, has the root, has the slows, and it seems like... Even on the other side of the map. Oh, look at that! Who just gets completely one shot in? Caught in the wrong spot, but so is Valentino. That is two kills right now, and that should be an easier dragon for Orn Academy. Yeah, and for Orn Academy, just keep doing what you're doing. I have, you're playing really well, you're playing to your strengths, and you're playing this early game to mid game uh, nearly perfectly. They're slowly getting that Anivia more and more fed. Look at the CS difference right now. 140 wow. CS compared to the 95 CS, right? So just keep up the good work, and they will soon secure a victory if they continue on uh, this direction. One of the big key points that we still have to be worried for and still have to look out for is Storm Rider's ability to macro their players in accordance to a good team fight scenario so they'll always put pieces and pawns in places that you wouldn't expect but also have a good time with just trading with anyone right so if so as long as they keep with that fundamental and keep with that and kind of drag it on and on and on they might have a better chance coming into the later stages of this game but will they get to the later stages of the game is the question right now because Orn Academy has a dragon up and all their laners are ahead. Even the jungle's ahead. That's a five player gap right now. They have to come such huge obstacles right now just to get back into the game because their gold deficit is not looking good right now and Anivia scales as well. You're so right on right on the money with that one actually. Um, will we see any fights? Maybe. It's all going to come down to positioning with these teams. But uh when you see these objectives come up, you're going to have a huge favor if you're coming from the Orange Academy side there. You're going to have these huge monstrous beasts who have just been farming and keeping their lead and not staying out of position. And it's going to feel almost impossible to get back into this yeah. game from Storm Riders. Here comes Wookie Warrior against two right now. Alpha Y and Alpha Pig both on him right now. He tries to block the damage from the Trundle, but is not able to block enough. He is just getting chomped up, and now Valentino gets engaged on as well as the counter engage. Island on roll is able to pick that up with another beautiful boomerang blade, stacking up that mana immunity, and death to Moo also just being an amazing support for him. Mm -hmm. So two people being caught out there. Great job on Storm Riders to get the Pantheon, and good job to follow up with the pressure coming in from Ormond's Academy. You're basically net even, and so nothing really much has changed. I would say that Pantheon kill is a bit more important, but here we go. Alpha Y actually turning this one around a little bit, but does not have his Dominus up. And Sin Zhao is able to cut straight through him. So much attack speed there. Only Mr. Yo will gladly take that trade. Yeah, like Alpha Y is trying to get the claws back into his position, trying to take anything but because you have to make these dangerous plays you leave yourself vulnerable to Zen Zhao, to Anivia, to Pantheon so that was scary <laughs> I'm surprised that missed right now, now <laughs> well, he flashes away it's just straight into the Zen Zhao though that is not getting you away from anywhere except the loading screen because that's where you'll be going after this game <laughs> the gray screen <laughs> simulator strikes again <laughs> Fortunately for them, but we'll see if uh, this turns around because they're still in this game for sure. This Ezreal stacking up, he'll have his own man immunity to counteract soon. Death to move lands an ult, but only the slow part, so not able to jump onto this Trundle right now. Yeah, Trundle just wants in his jungle. 
He just wants to farm. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Dominus is popped, mostly for wave there, but they know they have to back off. Alpha Y just thought maybe that turret could stand a little bit longer, but even with the Dominus, they're able to take it down with the Demolish. And that is another Renekton alt use. Alpha Pig actually jumping in a little too early here. Is it enough though? Wookie Warrior getting flashed on here. Alpha Y doing so much damage. And here we go. Only Mr. EO is able to get a kill back. But now they are in the enemy jungle against four people. Mr. EO is exhausted. There is no way out for him except into the fight and gets through straight, flashing through Alpha Y. Not able to get the stun, but Death to Mu is left alone as the sacrifice. Gladly taken away by Stormriders, but unfortunately they could not catch an amazing play from that Sin Zhao. Incredible. They, they, they can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> they got away. They to their little base gates, surrounded by four members, just going straight into the fight and just flashing straight past Alpha Y before he could even get stunned. That was amazing play. <laughs> you know, if uh, I, the Nevi the sorry, the Leona may have also been able to escape if they stayed a little bit closer to the Sin Zhao. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> it's obviously you can't really foreshadow all of those events to occur. The fact that Zen Zhao got out by going through them and back out the other way was insane. Dragon's going to be up in a couple seconds. You're going to have both teams up with all five members. You can't fight this if you're Storm Riders, but you need to fight it if you're Storm Riders. You're put in a lose-lose scenario, so you're looking for a miracle here. Yep, they haven't claimed the Sin Zhao bounty yet, but they still need to find a way to this dragon. Even behind, they have to find a way to get back into the game. Wookie Warrior, even though he's been dying a lot, he's been doing so much and tr just channeling all his pressure into the rest of the team. That's why this Anivia is able to get a CS lead. That's why the Sivir is able to walk around freely. It's because Wookie Warrior is just manning the front line. And look at that, the dragon. Oh my god, so much damage coming into the pit. But Death to Moo lands a great stun up to Valentino. Valentino survives though. Creek on the other side of the wall, not able to get in, but does get a stun onto this Ezreal who has to arcane shift over. That is a dragon and a free kill onto Valentino, but it did look scary for a second with those health bars melting. This is just gone from bad to worse for Storm Riders, as now that we see Orn's Forge Esports Academy coming out with that kill, coming out with the dragon, this is, oh no. Yeah. I mean, things look good for a moment there. Oh, Alpha Y versus Wookie Warrior again. I don't think Alpha Y could ever win this in a hundred years. And even then, Mr. EO is here as well, so there's nothing that Alpha Pig can do to save his friend over here. Making sure... <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to do God, some alcove like gaming, you know? Yeah. He, he, do, he did his best. That doesn't work this late into the game, though, unfortunately. Um, I was going to point something out. Let me see if I can remember it. Yeah, um, the last dragon fight, Brujo and Nikki were able to do so much damage with their ultimates into the members of uh, the people fighting in the pit there. So the Nivea was chunked, the Sivir was chunked, even um, uh, someone else there. I think that was the Sinzel. We'll just hold that thought. There is an mm. alt coming out. That <laughs> subjugate coming out from Trundle does not do enough to take down Wookie Warrior. Even if it was, Mr. EO is right here and they have no idea about it. The positioning from yeah. Orange Academy has been on point this game. They have a buddy system and they refuse to leave it alone. <laughs> but that's uh, back to what I was saying. Storm Riders definitely could have won that fight because of that Ezreal and Velkaz damage. The only thing stopping them was the Lux getting caught out by Death to Mu, who's been finding so many engages, along with another engage from Trundle. Getting that flash out from Sivir, that's huge. Maybe you can pick her off later. She does have a bounty on her, but we shall see in the near future. Yeah, I really like the point that you made there with the Velkaz damage and the Ezreal damage. Oh, sorry. Quick break. Oh, Alpha Y getting caught out for possibly the seventh time in a row. Is able to dash through, getting another dash reset, but the Frostbite is able to take him down. He was still chilled, and he is going to be frozen in time. That dinosaur is not getting out of the prehistoric area ages. <laughs> now oh. Getting flashed on. Death to Moot is going so crazy this game. Not going to land it, but it's going to land the Solar Flare. Mr. EO and Wookie Warrior able to clean that kill up. And that is two more kills. For Orton's Academy. How is he always in the perfect spot every time? 
He has been reading his opponents like a book. Mr. EO, you are on fire this game on point with wookie warrior having such a dominating lane presence the only mr eo has been on top of the enemy team constantly and been able to produce oh. so much for his team freak actually getting lasered down does get a stun on brujo but it's too late as she is egg and rooted and gonna take so much damage here. Is he gonna survive with the stopwatch? Brujo is taking a lot of no. damage. That flash flash will do it even through the exhaust while the rest of his team goes barren. And there's nothing Nikki can stop. Unfortunately, he is just not enough for the one man army. This Baron is going straight to Orange Academy with that Anivia pressure on the bottom side, winning a 2v1. Oh god, Anivia. Now <laughs> They're like, it's dead, it's dead, oh, it's in an egg, it's not dead, so please, wait, wait, it's coming back up, oh, it's, it's still not dead, it's... Yep, there's a stopwatch there, oh, nope, oh, I, I got exhaust, that, wait, no, that just kills me straight through, that Anivia is way too strong right now, that Leandri's damage doing so much, even though you can egg her, you're not able to catch up in time to finish off that egg, they still had to walk through, Lux was so far away, and that's why Anivia was able to revive, get that last frostbite off, and do so much damage to Ruho. Mm -hmm. This is a crucial part of the game. I wanted to touch base. What if we just fired Ezreal, Luxalt, and <laughs> throw a trundle into the dragon pit, you know, and just seal this dragon with the um, Velka's ulti as well? It's possible, but you need some really good team synergy and not get caught out. There's another pit coming onto Brujo right now. He just gets blown up by two sides. There's nowhere for him to go, and Alpha Y is trying to salvage the situation. Hysteris pops out, but Wookiee Warrior doing so much damage. Alpha Pick does alt subjugate the Leona, but is not tanky enough. And Creek on the other side, completely picking off the people who want to save him. That is four kills. What a beautiful play from basically three members roading five. Nikki was not even in the fight, and Valentino just gets completely picked off. This pick comp is working wonders for Orange Academy. Yeah, they're showcasing a great performance on comfortable picks as well as how they're supposed to perform in the game. And they now have soul. I don't know. I'm sorry. There's This is really just... They just got to keep up what they're doing and they're going to get the Baron. They already have the Baron. So they could probably end this one in just a... I don't know, one more push I would give them. Exactly. Yep. This is why I like the comp from Orange Academy. You have so many ways to pick off characters, and you have so many ways to back up those characters as well. Because you can just follow up after follow up after follow up. The Nivea came in as well. The Leona and the Pantheon doing so much damage. And the Sinzao at the end, just making sure everything went according to plan. This is just going so well. And there's nothing a poke comp can't do oh. if you just get killed immediately. Valentino, proving my point entirely, just gets one tap. By that Sinzao right now, and Wookiee Warrior going unstoppable. There is a Glacial Storm coming out. Alpha Pick with nowhere to go. Ruho with that little laser, but just gets completely one shot again by Wookiee Warrior. Just so much damage with the Divine Sunder, with that Pantheon, with the man, with the power of a god. There is nothing that can stop them right now. Orn's Academy are just steamrolling through this game with a decisive comeback compared to game one. You know, I thought this was going to be the Keurig, like, just showcase, because he's playing his main, he's playing a team comp that's literally based around him, but we just saw an annihilation, and Wookiee coming out of, I didn't think this was going to happen, but Wookiee was, what a great performance, the only Mr. EO, the whole team, as a unit, they took in game one, they took a deep breath, they just shrugged it off, and they came out large and in charge for game two. Draft was incredible. Team Cobb was incredible. They performed it, like, nearly perfectly. What a performance by them, and I'm excited to see what more they have to offer us as well. Exactly. They recovered so well from game one. It looked like a completely different team. Not even just mentioning the comp, because their first comp was a little defensive, a little passive, and they got destroyed by that Nasus, and they thought to re-strategize re completely. They're thinking, how do we shut down Alpha Y? And they did that in wonders, because this carry top laner, Wookiee Warrior, showing off why he's a warrior, and just getting revenge for everything that Nasus did for him. 
I only imagine their team comps was Wookiee just making Wookiee noises as he's just going on and killing everyone. That's a, it's, a, it's a personal just thing I, wa I wish would be happening, you know? <laughs> um, the entire team played so miraculously. Like, how does only Mr. EO get away with it every single time, deep into the enemy, just going straight into that and ending the game with zero deaths? Krieg with amazing plays and forcing so much pressure into that side lane bot where he loved to sit and just draw everyone away from Baron. Um, everyone just played so well. That Leona, Death to Mu, just blew my mind that game with how many picks she could get. And that's why you pick the Leona. That's why you pick that uh, comp to just pick out everyone that just wants to poke you out. You just one shot them instead. Not even to mention the things Alion roll just got away with. You know, for like no reason, just, he just was able to use his famous maneuver, walk away. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I don't think I'll ever forget that tower play where he just walks up, the mid and jungle come, flash on him, and he just kind of just walks away. A little, little ulti there just to give him a little speed and backs very safely there. I can't, like, it's, oh, I feel nearly, uh, my hands are tied when it comes to MVP for their team. Like, it's just, I, I, I'm, if I had to give it to a person, I would like to give it to their jungler. The, uh, because of the positioning, they were all game, which helped lead to his laner success, you know, and exactly. even team fights, I would probably give it to him. But as a whole, they all were like next level. This was not the same team I watched game one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, they could cover it in a spectacular way i don't know if i what happened to them if they'd like uh what's it called got up and drank some water and maybe one of them was uh feeling slightly better but man that was not a slight difference that was a landslide of a match they just had some g fuel just on hand they're like all right bring out the secret weapon <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> um now if i was to be looking at an ace for storm riders i would give it again to the jungler uh alpha pig played a great performance this game did the best they could. I mentioned it in draft phase where I felt Trundle wasn't a um, suitable pick into their team comp specifically, but he still performed at an elite level and was able to showcase time and time again why Trundle is a good pick no matter what. So I would give it to him for uh, the ace. Exactly. Even when they were disastrously behind, Trundle was still able to get vision get some picks, and secure some bounties for his team. Unfortunately, though, even though they had glimmers of hope, they were all shut down by Orange Academy. Even if they lost some members, they would always grab some more, and some more, and some more, and they would not stop, and that's why Orange Academy came out ahead. Absolutely. Alrighty, folks, that will end the stream for us tonight. Thank you all for coming out, and thank you as well uh, to my co-casters, uh, all the fans here today. And um, any final words? I know this was your actually first SEAL casting experience. Uh, how, how was it today? It was amazing. I'm so glad I came out today and just uh, offered myself up because this was an ex These games especially, that's what's exciting me the most right now is that they were so fun to watch and so great to see these players show off their skills. Even if they fall behind in like... Uh, early game or even like an entire game behind they will come back fighting and that's exactly what they will do Very so I'm well. really glad it came out today, and I'm excited to cast more in the future as well Awesome, thank you so much and as for us we are signing off everyone have a good night and I'll see you next time